Hello, speedrun and abiotic factor enjoyers. This is uh, Crush Depth's content, so Hydro Plant is the final chapter of the game for current content. Still two more big content drops to go. Uh, this is the No Major Glitches category, uh, which has been defined because of certain things like using the platform cart to go I under the manufacturing see. door. Uh, is an exploit, but not necessarily a glitch, as the community has decided, thanks to El Jeffy for giving us those wonderful definitions to, for clarity's sake. Uh, so there is a glitchless category that will be defined in the future that will not allow tricks like that. So no major glitches is primarily no out of bounds. That's like really the big main thing we have to not clip through walls at any point, which is what makes a big separation in routing between this and the any percent run, which will allow pretty much any glitch at this time, unless we find some kind of like credits warp, which would be bizarre uh, for a modern game. Uh, so what's happening here? Cafeteria, the usual getting prepped for stuff. Uh, a lot of metal pipes are needed, and six metal scrap specifically for making the platform cart and a battery because the way the route goes unfortunately there doesn't seem to be a meaningful way to uh dunk the nighttime section with movement there's just too many stops for crafting by the time uh, night comes around because a uh, hydro plant is a long section and there's two major three major crafting stops in it uh, making the battery doesn't really add that much time to the run. It's one extra PC. Uh, you'll see here, if you've noticed in my past runs, I just break that those PCs. But that time I realized if I break the table first, the stuff doesn't scatter as far. And I think it saves a little bit of time overall. Uh, one of the building tricks is if you're holding down the button to use your screwdriver and then go into a menu, it keeps building. So I try to... Take advantage of that. Uh, swapping out the slot, unfortunately, does not interrupt it, so I threw two of my nets. Uh, still made it out of here in a decent time. Uh, I think usually about 2.15 is a solid run. It can go a little bit lower if everything is executed really well, but this was like my seventh attempt of the day at this point and i was like whatever i'll i'll take a five second time loss if it means the run gets going uh, once again breaking something down to stop the stuff from scattering uh in this case i deliberately skip over the plastic and uh refresh the club just in case hitting the glass at that angle usually makes it fall into the room instead of out of the room which you saw it did uh, and two glasses for test tubes to get something out of the bag space on the way. Uh, quite a bit of this is, you may say, why are you futzing with the inventory? Just take it with you. It's either to manage weight or space. Uh, slot swapping to build faster. Uh, this has a lot of similarities at the start to the vacuum chamber percent run, uh, which would, has been folded into no major glitches now. So if you go back a version uh, to 0 0.8 on the speedrun.com leaderboards, uh, that's where vacuum percent will have gone, uh, along with uh, Hops's. Uh, first sub-hour run has moved there as well. Uh, a change with the Krupp Steff patch. Electronics with a battery uh, start empty instead of fully charged, so routing has to account for the fact that the uh, vacuum starts empty and needs to get filled. Uh, very important here, you may be tempted to vacuum up uh, inconvenient pests that show up, but it's very hard on the vacuum's battery, uh, and vacuuming up even one pest by the time you reach manufacturing can mean your battery is empty when you really need to be vacuuming up uh, crates and stuff like that. 
unfortunate to get a peccary in this area. Uh, fairly common to get one. If you get really bad luck, you get two. And now this is vacuuming up 19 PCs because I need 19 circuit boards. Uh, plus a multitude of other things. So the reason the monitors are often vacuumed up with them is you need something like 20... 22, 23 tech scraps over the course of the run as well. Uh, very nice luck to get a gaseous nest there. Uh, not so much because it saves time, because it ends up getting hauled all the way to manufacturing for build order reasons. Juke this pest to get the second bio scrap, because you need two LCD screens now for the uh, hacker chain. Um, but it does, back to the gaseous nest, it does mean you have guaranteed a gaseous nest, and there's always a guaranteed one in the caves under manufacturing. <laughs> Noticed here that uh, I was short two circuit boards. Unfortunately, sometimes the vacuum does eat things away, so I had to go grab two extra PCs. Not a huge time loss, thankfully, just a few handful of seconds. Uh, getting some unnecessary junk out of the bag. This is a... Uh... Trying to maximize timers, so build something, buy a slushy, build something, buy a slushy. Uh, best to start early because the slushy machine can error and eat your dollar. I've had it happen four times in a row on a few attempts, so, you know, the more window for error you give, the more it doesn't kill the run on you. Uh, right here, the original route was five energy bricks, and then when I realized I needed a sixth one for the vacuum. Uh, that's why I had to, I did the five, and then I'm like, oh, wait, I need one more. Not vacuum, battery. So a little bit of uh, organizing here. Uh, what this does is sets up for later when I build all the way from Hacker 1 up through Hacker 3 in one sitting. Uh, and by prepping certain things to get them out of the way now means they're just gone and they guarantee that I have the space I need for those things to be put into inventory as they're crafted instead of spilling on the ground from overflow. Uh, coils were specifically sorted because the four coils get taken all the way to Hydro to make the charge stand. If you ever try this jump, go wide to the left, that wall sticks out a little farther than it looks and it will bounce you and just fling you to the ground and you'll miss that plant shelf entirely and break legs. Another quick build. Now, uh, if this recover thing ever gets removed in the future, uh, we don't know if that's going to be here to stay or if it's just a feature of the beta, uh, I figure a lot of runs will probably still go to the data farm. We'll most likely just run with all the stuff, or if it's too heavy, wheel it in the cart along the way and do some shuffling. Because you can still, presumably, drop things in a loot spill bag by taking off your backpack. Gave me a little trouble this time. Sometimes it doesn't like to be targeted. If I hadn't gotten it about where I did, I probably would have restarted this run entirely, because that was starting to turn into a big time loss. So that was a manufacturing door step, skip, which will no longer be allowed in the new, in the redefined glitchless category, but this is no major glitches, so it is still allowed. Same with going up and over. Uh, now using the cart to, or a chair to break fall damage, uh, sorry about the loud noise, uh, is still up for debate. That might be banned in glitchless depending on what the community decides the category wants to be, but uh, no major glitches in any percent, which is allow any percent allowing out of bounds will probably be the main focus. Very surprising that this peccary aggroed on the vacuum. I have never seen that before. Uh, also just very unfortunate to get a peccary uh, spawn in that room. That's somewhat rare. So this route uses a skip from data farm into hydro plant, and it needs a lot of bridges. Plus, a lot of bridges are used to get from office sector into labs, uh, which you'll see after manufacturing. So that's why I'm collecting all this wood, including pallets, which give a considerable amount of wood. 
Uh, if you wondered what I was doing in the garage where I was looking into weird corners, I was checking specifically for the fire extinguisher. <clears throat> and it turned out it was right in this room, but there's no guarantee. And the reason I specifically picked that one up is every time you save and exit the game, it can shuffle resources like that. So if I had just left it on the wall, it might have removed that one next time the game was reloaded and put it over in the uh, workshop area instead, which I don't want to revisit. So that's why it's collected as soon as possible, so it's accounted for. This is just getting set up uh, to do the lap around, get uh, unnecessary things out of the bag, because again, inventory space and uh, weight management. Convenient that there's always a phone right there, uh, and then the boxes on the way in always have cloth in them, so you should easily have over two cloth. Now this guy, it's possible to get down that rope without aggroing him, but I actually do it on purpose, because what that does is it makes you a target for other enemies, so if they get within a certain radius of you, they aggro you because something else alerted them. Really bad luck here with this... Uh, stupid Exor, so I go and kill that box, see it gave me, uh, Claw. <laughs> Retreat into this room to get rid of the bleed. Like, that is an absolute worst case scenario. But, uh, what I was saying was it makes that guy down under the sniper aggro and come all the way up here to fight me. And by getting rid of him early, uh, it means dealing with the sniper is much easier, because... You really don't want to get a severe bleed and then have to exit and reset again, and that's a lot of HP lost, too, uh, which puts you in a very risky spot, uh, depending on what you're fighting. Like, an Exor monk sniping you takes a third of your HP at this stage of the game with no armor on. So crouch before you go up that ladder, get a slushy bomb in case he gets alerted to you, and if he doesn't, you can just walk up and clock him in the head. Uh, he always drops, snipers always drop the ammo for their gun and a cracked shoulder light. Now, the cracked shoulder light uh, can be broken down into military electronics, so that's a guaranteed mil military electronics. So killing that sniper is sort of a bad luck protection. Also, that route I just took through there, he can see there, and I really don't want to be shot, especially right here. He can shoot through the windows and cover that guy. meant to equip that radio pack. Sometimes when things bounce, I miss the targeting and pick them up instead of uh, holding E. <clears throat> These doors give me trouble if I go too fast through them. I perish the thought of a speedrun. The doors are basically speed bumps. They half open and then I can't get through them and have to reclose them and reopen them, so I've tried to get in the habit of just kicking them open. A lot of this box farming is to get enough wood for all the builds that need to happen, and uh, they have a high chance of giving additional screws as well, and screws greatly speed up certain kills like the robot in labs for a jailbroken CPU. A sort button is helpful here because anything I don't want will get pushed towards the back and it makes it easier to uh, identify what I don't need. Uh, having checked inventory, I don't need to go into the room with the rat because the only thing of value in there is uh, a steel cable and so far with the Crush Depths update, steel cables have been much more consistent with where they spawn and much more numerous, so this loop through manufacturing has uh, been way easier and way more reliable than it was with uh... I don't know how that guy aggroed. That was the weirdest thing. Uh, it has been much more consistent than when the vacuum chamber was the end goal of the game. 
And unfortunately here, I forgot I had gotten a gaseous nest uh, in office sector, so I picked up an extra Stay one. Down. That weighed me down a little bit, because those are four pounds. Uh, 3.25 went in the inventory slot, so, you know, it was just enough to tip me over into the yellow, so I needed to do an inventory thing. Uh, that's nine pounds, that's why I was considering it, and it was just like, ah, oh, it's not going to matter in a minute. And that was uh, confirming my military electronics. I only needed one more, so I Nothing grabbed yet. the guaranteed one, and then I don't have to scavenge the loot off of these guys. No. He usually runs the other way, that's why I got confused. And at this point, I've been carrying three uh, power cells without a hazmat suit. So I take the iodine to knock that down, pick up the fourth power cell, so... Uh, you may think, oh, it's a speed run. You're going to go fast. You're not going to need the hazmat suit. It just slows you down because it does slow you down. But uh, the amount of time you have to carry these, the radiation does get bad enough. Uh, by the end of this loop, you will start throwing up. And when you get down into dehydrated, it slows down your run speed. Uh, and, of course, carrying these power cells through Hydro Plant, because three of them have to make it all the way to the apartments, uh, you will get sick there as well. And getting sick would have been the death of this run if that had happened, so it was a good call to grab the hazmat suit here. So that little inventory shift was to try and force the game to remember my position here. Uh, because sometimes it will set you really far back every time you save and quit. The save and quit forces the robot to respawn, so I don't have to flail all over the place trying to collect the four uh, security bot CPUs needed to advance the game. Three of them make Hacker 1, and then uh, the LCD screen for Hacker 4. The other thing, I think this helps, I've only done this a little bit so I can't completely confirm it, but if the, uh, you catch it while the item is in the air, when you rejoin, I believe it just remembers where it was and puts it on the ground. So if it was going to fly all the way across to the other side of the wall, if I catch it while it's still directly above the robot, I believe it will land where it was frozen in the air when you paused the game, but I haven't been able to confirm that because it's completely random how stuff shoots out, so I may think, oh yeah, that worked, and in fact, it's just falling to the ground anyway, and I had no way of knowing. Screws were guaranteed uh, from the uh, orange striped boxes, then the trip mine method would be used to kill these robots because that would use a total of 16 screws instead of the only four by killing it with the mallet. And it would be much faster. I think it would save almost a whole minute to do that. But the run just doesn't have enough screws to do that safely. So all those anvils are to make screws. This is a, a bit of a dull section because there's a lot of crafting to do. I realize I had uh, <laughs> that I grabbed an extra gaseous nest and also forgot to reclaim my trip mine. So instead of leaving and going out that this room to the left through the garage, which is faster, I have to go out to the right, go back to the robot, and grab the uh, trip mine. Which, you know, the little mistakes in this probably would have gotten this to be a 47 something instead of a 48 but nothing major enough to warrant a reset at this point because this is more of a proof of a concept to make sure the uh, route works now the 10 metal scrap being saved that is to make a crowbar 2.0 once hydro plant is reached and crowbar 2.0 will one shot uh, soldiers in Vosea when hit from behind with a crouching position, so you get a sneak attack on them. You hit them in the head, and they go down, and that can, can be, be combined for weapon swapping, 
so you swing almost instantly instead of doing the I don't have strength a slow grunting wind up. Uh, and that is important because farming the soldiers in Voisseur means security gets to be skipped entirely, and it's a much shorter run for what is essentially equivalent to going into security for collecting because the boxes in security just take forever to break, even with the vacuum. Once again, uh, inventory cleanup here. Get rid of the stuff that isn't helping. Once you've made your 10 reinforced hoses, you don't need hoses anymore. Uh, only need enough wood to make uh, the sh remaining shelves and ramp for getting into hydro from office. And then I leave a gap for reclaiming the tripwire mine. And the tripwire mine is a big deal because it is actually a very noticeable time save and tends to be safer when executed properly for killing the uh, getting a jailbroken CPU in labs, because little things can easily mess that up if you go for the stun lock on the pink fuchsia purple colored robots, the mid-tier ones. Um, if something else hits them while you're doing that, it breaks them out of it, and the risky strat of that area is going for, uh, the, if you go for the stealth stun lock kill, uh, you, there is a peccary and an exor, the green one, that can show up and just decide, I'm going to attack you, I'm going to attack the robot, whatever. So, second visit to lobby. Quick uh, inventory organize to go into uh, do the double jump to labs. And of course, get rid of the hazmat suit for now. Because we're not carrying anything radioactive at the moment. I love that you can make this jump. I used to build a ramp there and then put a bridge on it. Just being able to do it in a single bridge is phenomenal. Uh, this jump is very consistent and very safe. Like, the main reason you're going to fall is if you don't stand up mid-roll. Uh, and just roll over the bounce pad and fall to your doom. Because bounce pads won't trigger if you are crouched. Uh, I miss that jump a lot over the Concophonous Crate. I don't know why. It's just like a, a tick for me at this point. It happens more than it doesn't, despite me knowing that jump is annoying. Uh, this loading zone, I love this. It has made this so much easier because, yeah, there, I'm lined up. I can start mashing the button. Uh, I have not failed that since I have used the loading zone to my advantage. Recollect that bridge because that meant one less bridge I needed to make to do the double bridge here. Uh, previous run, I somehow fell from that. You can run across that little pipe, so I took the extra half a second to make sure... Uh, I didn't just get ricocheted into the toxic who, uh, Mountain Dew down there. So this is it. This is, uh, you get to see three whole rooms of labs. Come in here for an Antiverse gem. Drop the Antiverse wheat. More gem. Don't need those right now. And uh, in, in hindsight, I might start bringing just six anti-wheat instead of bothering using the sealed chambers. Just go straight to the trade thing and get six. I think it'll save a small amount of time. So this robot, you can break it out by shooting the tripwire at it, but why waste the screws when they're so precious? Uh, the setup here... is uh, wait for him to activate the trip mine itself. And then every time it uh, you fire it, you want to wait for the the immediate sound of the clank, the stomp. So it goes stomp, stomp when it gets hit. 
as soon as you hear the first stomp, you fire it again. That's about right for the timing. You saw that was a very quick and clean uh, robot kill there, so that went very well. Uh, the unfortunate thing there, I didn't get lucky and get a military backpack, so I'm still running with a radio or uh, security pack. Those three extra slots would have s eliminated this extra waddle up the hill. Also would have made it a little easier to do the build cycle here. I wouldn't have to think so hard about what to deposit. Now we're going to build all the way up to Hacker 3, and the reason for that is because there's just too much stuff to carry at this point, and building up to Hacker 3 eliminates a large chunk of the stuff in the bag. Like, you saw it, it not, I couldn't even carry everything, and by the time I'm done, it's like half an inventory full. <clears throat> had a moment with the uh, quantum glass. Uh, usually I bring exactly the amount of glass I need, but I decided it was easier to just dump the excess glass, but I have to be careful and not do a build all there. Okay, so there's Hacker 3. We're going to make a heater shield, because having a shield comes in handy. Uh, and the heater shield does not take that much more to build on the way. Uh, is actually faster and more reliable than making cushioned armor and a plastic shield. Because of the components for both of those, it's he they're both duct tape heavy, and they both need a cafeteria tray. And getting two cafeteria trays is kind of an inconsistent spawn that's out of the way. Uh, and then you have to scavenge filing cabinets for additional duct tape to have enough to make uh, the final crafting table at the end. So the heater shield just really worked out well. And that was a uh, suggestion from one of the Discord users who hasn't uh, run the game yet, to my knowledge, but is interested in it. That is uh, Sager. I'm bad with names, so I had to go look it up, so I, you know, said it right. But thanks, for, thanks again for the idea of the heater shield. That has been a great help on this run for both dealing with the sniper and getting through Voicier. So those bridges could have probably gotten away with just being rebuilt. Uh, but going for a third gaseous nest, like technically I had the opportunity to do it this run, and if I was thinking I would have... Uh, but normally getting two is a small gamble. Like, there's a very high chance you'll get two of them in the cave under manufacturing, but sometimes it's only one, and if you don't get the one in office sector either, um, the run's not dead, but you're adding, like, an extra minute or two to have to wait for the gate to open on the ramp to labs so you can... Uh, Make the first jump, go back, get the jump pad, then go back over to uh, the ramp, do that jump, and then when you get back again from the death warp after labs, you have to go all the way out on that section to reclaim your jump pad if you only have the one. So that turns into a lot of extra backtrack that starts to add up pretty quick. So two is a solid number and reliable. Uh, and you have no way of knowing you're going to get a third one uh, until, like, did you get the one in office? Sure. Are you going to get two in uh, manufacturing? Maybe. And this is ridiculous. Look how quick this sniper is like, oh, hey, there's a guy over there. How does he even see you? It's absolutely insane how fast the reaction time in is is on top of how quickly they start shooting at you, and their rate of fire, and the fact that they never have to reload. They're absolutely brutal enemies, so I'm glad to see in the community update they're considering tweaking how snipers behave. They don't need much, but they are just a bit overbearing right now. So, uh, eight bridges built on a ramp, so you can just go straight across like this, otherwise it takes a lot more bridges. Uh, you need to place a chair or a... Um, 
platform cart, which it won't let you do on more than two buildables stacked on each other. So that's what the, the shelf is for, it's reset. So the shelf is one, that's two. I do a save and exit to wipe sniper aggro. This is literally to buy an extra second of safety to do this drop without getting shot and potentially severely bleeded. Uh, sometimes the platform cart can go slightly under the bridge and you grab it and it can't go anywhere and then when you let go you fall to your doom. So that was, I was glad that happened. See, first use of the shield to survive the sniper. Second use of the shield to survive the sniper. Need a gauge, hydro pipes for later. And then that is to once again reset the sniper's aggro. Because uh, he spotted me, that puts him in alert mode where he's holding the rifle up to his head instead of just standing idle. Uh, and that seems to make them more likely to detect you when you're sneaking up behind them. So I figured I'll take the couple of seconds penalty to make sure he's doing this stance and I can just kill him. Because uh, I need that car battery and there's no way I could run over to that all the way over here with the sniper shooting me. That's way too close. He'll hit almost every shot. I could have saved a small... Like a couple seconds there if I had jumped and dropped down onto the ramp. I didn't think about it until I had made the run, so I was like, oh well. Taking the long way. This little trick here pretty much defines Hydro Plant. Oh, there's a locked door in the way. And then like two feet away from that is a way to get around the locked door and open it. I didn't think I had gotten the critical item from that. That's why I stopped and looked around for a moment. Uh, just need the power supply there, that is to make the uh, crafting bench. Convenient that that's right there. Uh, and this is what I was talking about with the battery. It hits nighttime here. You have to talk to these guys and, look, uh, and not... You craft here because you're stuck anyway. The dark lane's gone. Um, it the is potentially possible to, to get here before nightfall and out. get the crafting done, so but then you'd get over to the, the apartments and it would still be night and you wouldn't be able to make the jetpack anyway, so the battery Nobody is very important for this. Our lives like that, which is exactly why we should do it. It could be our Of course, the uh, charging it, station is important because you need to charge the jetpack. There's my boy Crowbar 2.0. Start with the power system over there. These quakes trigger the shutdown, but should reset. And I got distracted. Uh, the next part. Tidying up my inventory here, and I noticed that for some reason I lost my hydro pipes. I either exited the game too soon after the sniper, which seems unlikely because it's usually pretty good about that, or uh, making the crafting bench use them up for some reason. So uh, the backup strat for that is I had to get it from Vosor instead. Yeah, I can't push that button until the conversation is done, unfortunately. It would be nice to be able to just push it and leave and not have to stand around and wait for them and do the crafting uh, all in one spot. So this is fun. Nighttime, in the water. Uh, the trick to this is I line up my dot on where I want to go and don't adjust until I've been in there for a few seconds. The reason for that is the sniper can potentially be up on the balcony up there. He has four different spawn points. If he's in one of the ones overlooking that spot, he'll see you drop into the water, and if you surface, he can shoot you, so I just didn't want to chance it, and it only adds maybe a second not being able to see and keep yourself level because you're going at diagonals instead of straight lines. Gotta love fast building. Yeah, at this point, I'm 34 minutes in. Getting a little flustered. The run is actually going pretty well. The mistakes have been minor and honestly pretty reasonable things for RNG and just human error. Like, maybe have lost a, 
a minute to normal human play, like not playing. If this was tasked, like it would be minutes upon minutes. I don't even know if you can task this game right now. I feel like this was deliberate design. That spot right up there uh, gives you exactly what you need to make one jetpack. Like some of the other components you have to get elsewhere, but that's the critical one. That's the one you, I didn't have access to until just now on the map. And you can't get more until... So if you piss those away, you have to go... Uh, you have to go swimming. Like, oh yeah, I gotta actually plug this charging station. Since I have to wait for it to charge, it gives me a second to putz. Realize I don't need those anymore. And that's about right for... You'll see the jetpack has more than enough fuel by the end. Well, this was interesting, doing it in the dark with no lights. Thankfully, I have done this enough in practice runs. I had a pretty good idea of where I needed to be. <laughs> che checking my watch, how much longer do I have to not see? Uh, this jump, because I couldn't see, I badly estimated my fuel and position. And there it is, broken legs. Um, because that slows you down and jumping carries momentum, uh, I delay there, run around, move some stuff around the inventory because that sometimes causes it to save your character. Force a world save because the last thing I want it to do is roll me back all the way to on top of the roof or even worse for saving and exiting to clear the broken, broken bones. So thankfully it worked. That only cost a couple seconds to fix it. This one I have slightly better visibility, and then the lights turn on, so that was nice. Oh, this was pretty funny. I get what I need. Uh, that look up is me thinking, hey, I can come here after I'm done in Bosor. And then I... I don't know if you could see the defeat just in the angle of how I watched it fall of, I just dropped the wrong thing. I found it odd that that didn't give another one of the red coil pieces. I thought those were guaranteed from that. A little brisk in here. And here's where the heater shield comes into play. I probably could have crouched a lot later than that. So close quarter combatants, CQCs, uh, always drop a magnetic alloy when they are defeated. Uh, the Alpine troopers? I'm not sure what the ones with the place rifle are called. Uh, they always drop a Kevlar, and the rooks, the guys with the riot shield, uh, always drop a sensor. And you'll see down the mountain, there's a really good spot. You can stealth kill both a CQC and a Rook right next to each other consistently again and again. Uh, there's also one of the Alpine Troopers there, but uh, the no spawn window or however the game does it. I can't. Uh, if you position yourself right, you can force the other two to respawn, but not that one. I like that rook that came up and was like, hello there. I just nope on out. The joys of a jetpack. That was really odd that the uh, close quarter combatant uh, aggroed me there. Usually there's a rook in that room and that's what I have to deal with. So. I've had, I have had that guy be up there and shoot me in the back as I'm sliding down, so that's why I turned around and shielded. I still don't know what happened to my hydro pipe. I, I remember seeing it in my inventory, and then at some point it was gone, but making the crafting bench should have only used uh, two of them, so I should have had one left. So somehow 
uh, Palpatine returned. I mean, the hydro pumps pipes just vanished from my inventory. So it must have been because I exited too soon, or it didn't properly save my inventory on my character? I don't know. I'll, I'll have to look into that more, because I have had items go missing on me, and that might be why this is the first time I've caught it happening in a way that didn't make sense. So here's the first Alpine Trooper. I can feel my blood sugar uh, bonk. So he is getting hit by the Crowbar 2.0 because of the weapon swap. It just doesn't look like it. It makes you much faster. Now, unlike the robot, uh, the reason I pick things up immediately after these guys die uh, is I've had issues with the soldiers after about four third. kills. If you pick up nothing that they dropped, additional kills do not give any loot. So I make sure I at least pick up the thing I need, and that seems to make sure they always drop what they need to. Uh, also, you'll see the floor starts to get very cluttered, because this is something you have to do eight times. I think I end up doing it a ninth because I lose one of them in the debris. Uh, the fact that it's rolling me back here is actually to the advantage. Because being that far away, that line in the snow where it goes from flat to lumpy is about the f distance you need to be to get these two to respawn, but not the uh, trooper on the left. So I get to take advantage of that for about half of the kills, and then it starts remembering my position over their corpses, so I have to run out and then come back once they've respawned. I'm a little exothermic. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, you may think, oh gosh, this this takes like four actual minutes farming these guys, maybe five. Feel my blood sugar falling. I see, like in this case, I'm not sure where the sensor went. It's under his body. Thankfully, it let me grab it. And then there's another case of losing a sensor. Uh, what was he saying? Yes, um, but four or five minutes of farming these guys. Uh, but the alternative is breaking I'm a little eight to ten of the very durable flat blue boxes in security while also never knowing if the Reaper is just going to show up and send you back to the front and literally cost you two minutes because he grabbed you. Now there's some stuff you can do to kind of mitigate that by placing chairs in key spots. It'll get him stuck. Uh, and as long as he doesn't see you, he'll just stay stuck on the chair and you're fine. You don't have to worry about him. But if he sees you, he'll kill the chair in two to three hits. And now you've lost your chair and he's chasing you, so you still have to deal with him chasing you. Anyone else getting a bit hungry? Uh, which can also waste easily a minute for the full duration of him chasing you. I'm so cold. So what I learned from this, that situation there, I couldn't find the sensor. Uh, I think the best solution when that happens is to just exit anyway and hope uh, it turns up next time. And just keep the grind going to get them go, get them to drop as quickly as possible. And if you lose one, you lose one, and you have to do an extra. In this case, I got lucky, and there it was. It flew behind him. I perceive a distinct lack of snacks. But now I can't find the sensor, and that's where I realize, okay, I'm just gonna back out, and maybe it'll pop up, or I'll catch it, or when I'm done the full rotation, I'll just vacuum up as much as possible, and hopefully it'll be in the pile. I'm a little exothermic. But uh, this, this sense of clutter, I almost wish the game had an option for an enemy loot bag. Like you can loot the corpse or it makes a loot spill bag when they die instead of the loot just flying everywhere. See, now I have my... Uh, 10 sensors, I own, or uh, 10 magnetic alloy, I only need a sensor. Uh, I don't see it around the corpse. Vacuumed up everything under the corpse. No dice, so I'm just going to have to do an extra set of kills. Whew, a little brisk in here. And there we go, there's the last sensor. So what I'm looking at here is all the stuff I have to take back with me. Uh, there's 
I could have put it on my bar, because I don't technically need my weapons anymore. I could have gotten rid of uh, slots 1, 2, and 3, both weapons in the vacuum. That honestly would have been the smarter choice, because the guy's getting tired and hungry. So, something to note for next time. But thankfully, it's not that big of a time loss, just going for the portal, because otherwise I'd die, go to portal entrance, and then step outside anyway, which is its own small run. Um, the main reason that would have been beneficial is to get the ex to get a top off on HP. Being two-thirds HP going into the apartment run, uh, I hadn't thought about that. That's really scary. And I also could have taken advantage of my uh, last two frost slushy bombs, but I didn't. Final bit of crafting. I always forget that's a, a equipped. Yeah, the hope was I was going to be able to death warp. <laughs> Backup strat to get enough of the toroidal, whatever those orange things are called. there's enough of them on the way, you should be okay, because worst case scenario, there's a room in Vosor uh, you could run into right at the end and uh, grab the last one you need if you literally only get one from everything. But the pretty solid odds you're going to get at least two from one of the four? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, and see this. Get chomped on by the dog. Don't have a lot of options here, so it's just a save and quit to reset them and get out of combat. Between the invisible spider spitter and uh, the sow, I, I was dead. And then that dude gets a double hit and immediately teleports in front of me. And thankfully, when they teleport, they grenade. Because if he had just shot me, I probably would have died there. Lack of snacks. Gotta be grateful for the AI being dumb. If only weight wasn't such a big issue, it'd be nice to bring a cot all the way from manufacturing. Especially because you're building in a room with that has one, just for the uh, quick lay down. You spend like one, two seconds laying down, and eh, maybe it's more like four, uh, and get a full stamina refill. So when the game was uh, vacuum, open the vacuum chamber, uh, the vacuum chamber was reached at the night of the first day. And in this case, we're reaching the vacuum chamber, probably about the middle, not the vacuum chamber, but uh, we're reaching the reactor entrance uh, about afternoon of the first day. I'm being super careful here because these falls are deceptively hard uh, and it would kill me with so little HP left. Like, literally, I am one tap away from death in so many safe cases. Fall damage, snipers. Uh, the reason I scoot around that door so quick is because of the sniper up there. And the sniper can shoot you right down there, too. Also, almost fell to my death. I love Newman's... Insufficiency of food. And there it is. 48 you minutes, 14 seconds, real time. Boundary of dust. Ask yourself, has the moment arrived, or will it wait? This impasse shields you now, for dark energy lies below. And dark energy is the next content drop, but for now, this is the end of the game. And to show you how much time... Those uh, save and quits cost 10 extra minutes compared to the time the world was active. Thanks for watching.